Hey everyone, it's Quickie Baby and welcome back to World of Tanks and today I am playing at low tier, although usually I'd be on my free to play account. I'm on my main account and that's because this game happened during my recent tank tree showcase a couple of days ago on Sunday where I was featuring all of the Swedish medium tanks and yeah boy, what a showcase it was. Well I'm not going to spoil the outcome of this game, we had some absolute crackers along the way. It was a fantastic showcase and I was thinking absolutely nothing can go wrong, right? When you're on cloud nine, you're playing in some Swedish medium tanks and uh, oh dear, it looks like something has gone wrong for this this Panzer 1C. So I actually don't shoot the Panzer 1C that's flipped here and I think I'll shoot the Stuart but oh my word next level Stuart actually manages to save the Panzer 1C. What a legend there. A shout out to you damn high on the enemy team for, for literally stopping in the line of fire while I was shooting at you and tipping that Panzer 1C back onto his tracks. However um Looks like while I was just sitting there unloading on somebody who was trying to do a, a good job, I guess karma struck me as the enemy artillery just hit me for 207 damage. And yeah, that's right, that little SU-26 on the enemy team has something stupid like an 8 round a minute rate of fire. It's firing pretty much every kind of like 5 to 10 seconds. And when it can remove pretty much all of your hit points in a single shot, it really makes you realize that low tier artillery, while they're probably not as devastating as they once were, um, they're still absolutely ruthless <laughs> at taking out all of the, the low tier puppies, right? And I guess I'm a low tier puppy in this case as well. So I'm playing in the tier 3 Swedish light tank, the Stritzfang um, M40L. Now this vehicle, I honestly think, is a hidden gem along the Swedish tech tree. Do you know why? It's not because it's the fastest. It's not because it has the best DPM. It's not because it's the most accurate with uh, the best aim time. This is an all-rounder at tier 4. This vehicle can do everything. Well, actually, I say it doesn't have the best aim time, and I just realized the aim time on this tank is 1.6 seconds. Look at the legendary gun handling this vehicle has. It's very unusual at low tier to have an aim time that is as low as this. Look how instantly responsive the aim circle is to changes in your reticle or when you make movements and then you stop. Something like this is really the difference between most tier 9 and tier 10 tanks in World of Tanks. That, that's, that's, that's pretty much the difference from going from tier 9 medium tanks to tier 10 medium tanks. Your DPM for a lot of the vehicles like the E50M stays exactly the same. It just feels like it's the, the gun handling that improves on a lot of vehicles. Think T54 to Object 140. Your alpha damage doesn't go up. Your penetration with premium rounds doesn't go up at all. It's really the gun handling and yeah, a little bit of rate of fire. So to have this kind of responsiveness at low tier is, is really lovely. When you add to this an impressive penetration of 78mm at tier 3 and premium rounds with 98mm of penetration, whoa, this tank's starting to look rather good. And to uh, wrap it all off, uh, did I mention that this vehicle has a staggering 15 degrees of gun depression? And so while that's not really going to be much use on Runeberg, when you get into a map like Mines, and if you can manage to get on top of the hill, you can literally almost shoot the ground right in front of your vehicle, let alone shooting over ridge lines at opponents that have no chance of being able to react or engage back against you. And so the Stritzfang M40L, definitely one of my favorites at tier 3. So much so that I always try to keep a vehicle, uh, sorry, a crew inside this tank. Keep a vehicle inside this tank? Well, uh, the tank isn't that big. I always try to keep a, a good crew inside this vehicle. Especially so considering there's actually a little premium tank in the game called the L60. That there aren't really many, if any, Swedish light tanks in the game. And so this is the best one to keep it in when you, if you do fancy taking the L60 out for a spin occasionally. All right, so two Matildas on the enemy team are waltzing their way through our team. They've picked up three kills between them, and those vehicles, hardly anything is able to penetrate them unless they just give up the complete flat side of their tank. And really, it's only me who's been doing the damage to the Matilda here, and I'm loading the gold, I have to admit, at low tiers to be able to, to balance it out. But I'm a low tier tank, I'm a tier three tank, taking out one of the best vehicles tier for tier in the game. The Matilda is an absolute incredible seal clubber. And uh, with all due respect to these two players, afterwards I took a look to see if they were kind of professionals. From the stance of a lot of people just play the Matilda again and again and again and again, even though they've got tier 10 tanks, even though that they're, uh, they've advanced at the game enough that you'd expect that they would move on to, to other higher tier vehicles. 
But these two players, actually, one of them has played, I think, 20,000 games of World of Tanks, and the other one has, I think, played about a, a few hundred games of World of Tanks. And so I guess his friend is showing him the ropes. So it's a little bit unfortunate that I'm there to stop their, their momentum. They had five kills between them in the Matilda. And uh, yeah, the Matilda, definitely one of the best vehicles. If you've got a friend and you want to show them World of Tanks, they could get the Matilda within an hour or so if you recruit them. Um, and then you can you can play around with them in the Matilda, uh, and it's it's an incredible vehicle with enough penetration to not have to fire premium rounds, enough armor to be forgiving, and a, an excellent gun handling to still be allowed to uh, to be able to engage your opponents willy nilly at any kind of distances. Very forgiving for a new player, is what I'm saying. So that's exactly what those two players were doing. So I can't feel too guilty about shooting them. Uh, well, actually, I can. I can feel very guilty because one of them was obviously uh, skilled, but one of them more experienced inside the game, and the other one was uh, just trying to get to grips with it. I feel so dirty at low tier, I have to admit. I'm trying to get through this replay, thinking about it. Um, it just doesn't feel right to be playing low tier tanks. Uh, I'm, but hopefully also you guys are going to get enough from this this gameplay there's two things that i really want to highlight number one did you see how i was using the bushes back on the ridge line you go forwards you spot through the bush you pull back behind the bush until it's no longer transparent then you can shoot through the bush without your opponents having a chance of spotting you you can do this even in your heavy tanks although it better be a slightly bigger bush if you're going to do it in a heavy tank or a tank destroyer with a big caliber gun and bad camera rating the other thing that I wanted to highlight is to kind of like never give up. At the start of this game, so many ludicrous things happened. We had the, the vehicle that flipped himself around a corner. Then we had the hero Stuart who stopped in the line of fire to help him out. And then we had the artillery one shot, nearly one shot me, put me down to less than 10% of my starting hit points. But look at the impact that we're managing to have by using game mechanics. It doesn't matter how many hit points you have left. As long as you still have one hit point, you are just as dangerous until you get shot or splashed by artillery as somebody who has 100% of their hit points remaining. And so I was really proud of this one. Um, usually, uh, if I do get hit so hard by artillery at the start of the game, I probably have a little bit of a cry. And then I drive into an aggressive location and just play aggressively. And if I die, well, then I'll blame the artillery anyway. This time, considering it was during one of my tech tree showcases, one of my favorite things to do during the week, and I was full of energy and patience and really wanting to, to show this line off for all of its capacity, I had the, <laughs> the restraint to not do that, even at low tiers, to pull back and just look at the impact that we've managed to have. A thousand damage with 23 hit points at tier three, not in the best possible matchmaking, and against a platoon of what I would usually call seal clubbers inside Matildas, although, as I've clearly highlighted, it's just a friend who wants to show a new player um, uh, what World of Tanks is all about, and no better vehicle than the Matilda or possibly even the KV-1 to do that. Although even though I think the KV-1 might be a, a lot less friendly than, Ma than the Matilda now that I think about it. All right, so another thing. At the end of the game, communication is key. You see how I'm trying to communicate with the Vesper who's on my team right now. I say, can we work together? Do you speak English? Happy face. Unfortunately, the Panzer 1C replies who is no longer in the game, but uh, shout out to you Lars Gaming 9 as well. So I'm hoping that I can work with the Vespa to find out where this SU-26 is. This is a devastating tier 3 self-propelled gun with fantastic aim time, good accuracy, although terrible view range. And so that's really where my advantage is. There's no way that the SU-26 can really sneak up on me. If he's driving, he's not using his binoculars. And if he's not using his binoculars, then he's got terrible view range. And he's not going to see me until about 150 meters. However, I don't really want to drive too close to his bush, because if I do, if he's still sitting in that location where he was last spotted, then he will be able to spot me. And after he finishes me off, it's a very easy game for him to be able to take out the Vesp, because I believe uh, SU-26 has a, a turreted gun as well. So he's very flexible and he'll be very proficient in self-propelled gun, self-propelled gun combat. All right, so the Vesp on my team has managed to make it into the cap circle, and I'm thinking, shall I wait here and try and just keep my binoculars activated, and if the SU-26 goes towards him, then I'll be able to finish him off. But I decide, with one minute 
and 32 seconds until the vest manages to cap that I better go get into close quarters combat because I thought that the SU-26 on the enemy team would be going into these bushes that you see along here possibly or even just into this bush here, spot the vest, pull back behind the bush and shoot him because he's got three kills. Either he's been getting very lucky or he's a knowledgeable player and he managed to smash me at the start of the game and I don't want to give him the satisfaction of finishing me off in front of 5,000 people on Twitch, right? <laughs> All right, so I'm going into this bush right now, and I'm just going to hopefully set up my binoculars in a second. But I'm also very concerned. I have to admit. Sorry, excuse me. I think I get a little bit paranoid at moments like this. When there's artillery on the enemy team who can fire at me indirectly, and I'm streaming, and I got hit at the start, I, I, I don't really want to sit completely in the bush. If I did, I I've got a sneaking suspicion that the SU-26 might be able to blind fire me, which is why I'm around the corner here. The SU-26 has god-awful um, splash radius, and so if he does fire into the bush, it will splash and probably not take out my vehicle, and then I'll know that he's watching the stream, and then I'll adjust my play accordingly. These are advanced tactics that, unless you're a streamer who's who's being watched by a large percentage of the, the World of Tanks player base, probably not necessary that you, you figure out, um, or you even try and attempt. Just sit in the blooming bush. Get your binoculars and your camera net activated. If you're wondering why I'm sitting behind, it's because I'm trying to play mind games. Talk about playing mind games. Did that Vesp really just decap right at the end? Or did he just get hit? I'm so confused. Hold on, I'm actually going to have to rewind the replay there. Did the SU-26 actually hit the, hit the Vesp? Or did he just fall back? No. Six seconds left. No, he just drove out the cap circle. Oh my lord, what is going on here? Okay, we well, can see I was very confused as to why, with four minutes left on the game, the artillery would just leave the cap circle. I guess he's got that kind of no cap kill all attitude. It's just, mate, can we not do no cap kill all when I'm sitting on 23 hit points, you're on 14 hit points, and there's an SU-26 on the enemy team with three kills who could be in any of these bushes on Runeberg. Alright, so what I want to do is just keep up with the Vesp, because of course if the SU-26 fires at him, I've probably got a 5-10 to 10 second window to be able to go and engage the SU-26. I just decide to let this little tier 3 German artillery do whatever he wants, and I'm going to drive away from him here, and I'm going to go make my way towards the cap circle, because with 3 minutes and 30 seconds left on the game, uh, we're going to have to cap out unless the SU-26 is going to come at us. Now what could the SU-26 be doing? And why would he have just allowed the Vesp to be able to fully cap out? Either the SU-26 is on his side, or alternatively, he was making his way towards our cap circle, and when the Vesp started capping, he was making his way back towards us. And maybe he's figured out that I'm in one of the bushes here, and then he tried to adjust his tactics to try and be able to come round here. So that's where I'm putting the SU-26 now. I thought if the SU-26... Jeez Louise, what was that? There's a spy on our team. Okay. Ladies and gents, I nearly got completely trolled there. The Vesp on our team fired a shot at me, but thank goodness he actually missed. So the Vesp was trying to kill me, and my reactions, okay, say, alright, this guy's either trying to take the mick out of me, or he's trying to literally sabotage our game, boys and girls. And so I just decide, look, I'm not gonna- why would he do that? Either he's a spy from the enemy team, or he's angry that I'm capping? Does he think that I meant to go and spot for him to enable him to go get another kill? Mate, I was not having any of that. And there you go, the SU-26 finally shows where he is. And I guess what the SU-26 is trying to say now, hey, Mate, why didn't you leave the cap circle and come and get me, right? But can, what would have happened if the Vesp had hit me there? I'm 99% certain if the Vesp had hit me that the SU-26 would have just started capping and would have been able to take down this game. So what in hell's name was going on, ladies and gents? I was just happy to be able to shut this one down, even with an attempted conspirer from the enemy team trying to sabotage 
our team's chances of winning in this one. So clearly the fact that the SU-26 entered the cap circle meant that he was not stuck, he was not on his side. So the next thing I wanted to check was, how did the SU-26 fire all of his ammunition? So he fired 30 rounds. But as we can clearly see on the Awesome Tanks GG website, the SU-26 has 48 rounds of ammunition, irrelevant of what gun it has on it. The next thing that I checked is this SU-26 drove 2.24 kilometers in this game. That's enough to go there and back again from the extent of the map. And in fact, I drove less than a half a kilometer extra compared to what the tier 3 self-propelled gun did on the enemy team. So I guess the SU-26 was just trundling around trying to maybe catch me out or maybe trying to find the artillery on our team and luckily for me he didn't finish me off at the start of the battle and the very few remaining hit points that we had was enough to secure us an ace tanker and Orlix medal for taking out higher tiered opponents and an invader although I did fire quite a few premium rounds at this Matilda's so I did lose 6,000 credits. So an absolute wild wacky game here i really wanted to feature it because there's a lot of crazy things that go on at low tiers it's just i'm not often playing low tiers to be able to experience them i loved this game of world of tanks it has everything that makes low tiers just so funny to play it had flips it had heroes monster op tanks rolling through the entirety of your team tense end game situations and even <laughs> a few little spies or trolls that luckily i guess missed us and we managed to shut them down before they took the game away, right? And I'm looking forward to seeing what the comments are going to be like. Do you guys think that I did the, the right thing to kill that Vesper? And funnily enough, considering that team damage is going to be turned off next patch, maybe this could, could have been one of the very last times that I could have been trolled like that in World of Tanks. Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed this one today. If you did, give it a thumbs up. But if you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And let me know in the comments what you think about low tier gameplay is it something that you just think you should try and avoid because you're now hopefully a more experienced player in world of tanks or alternatively do you think there's enough fun little vehicles around there like the panzer 1c for example that you'll have a dip into when everything seems to be going a little bit wrong and as always thank you so much for watching you've been epic and hopefully i'll see you soon